I didn't go to art college, you might know that. I didn't draw or paint. So I had to sort of use my talents elsewhere and think what I was good at. And I was probably better at doing rooms full of things that maybe existed already and putting them together, sort of curating. Or I was probably good at making, uh, making things happen, doing events and having ideas about events and society and so on. I think being an artist can help you put off mental health problems. It's a very good way of, put, of channeling your ideas and anger about the world around you. So it's actually quite, it's a quite a good way of keeping you sane, if anything. But obviously a lot of artists do have those problems, but then a lot of people anyway have those problems. I think you've just got to get out and see things. You know, go and see shows, go and see anything that's going on, any festivals that are happening. I know it can cost money, try and find stuff that's going on but is maybe free and out there and just see what's going on and because uh, you learn every, t every time you go into a museum you learn something I find that as an artist so it's just if you're aware of the thing I did in with the car going around America the car was destroyed in Baghdad and stuff I mean that's like almost a journalistic thing that's about the news almost so that's that's what interests me anyway as, I'm obsessed with the news, so that's probably why I make work like that. But I do make work that's frivolous and stupid as well at the same time, and so I, I can do both. Have you seen the inflatable Stonehenge I did? You've seen that? See, that's the kind of example of something that isn't just about hard politics. Or something. I'm often inspired by artists and their attitude, rather than what they make even, the way they go about their lives and how they make things and how they don't make compromises and they have a certain flair to what they do. So I like a lot of artists, but I'm very lucky. I can make money doing what I want. And I make quite a good living considering I don't sell work. But I do, I get by okay. But I'm in a very, very privileged position. There's a lot more money in the art world. There's a lot more people selling work. But it's still quite a small amount of people. And if you're not one of them, I think it sends you a bit nuts actually. Projects. I'd like to make a uh, feature film. There's two I have in mind. I'd like, I'd like to make a feature film. But that's like proper work, so I don't know why I could do it. It's just much too much work. But People say, what inspired you to make an artwork about the Iraq war? Well, you just answered your question. Not that you asked me that, but well, the Iraq war, of course. That's what inspired me. Not, you know, so it's the thing itself. I do like to keep a certain tone. I'm not really into the kind of art that is really lecturing and didactic and just like just tries to sort of convince you with an idea by just like hammering you on the head with it. I like to think I'm a little bit more subtle than that. Maybe not, I don't know, but on the whole I try to be. So I really liked him. I never went back to, to my school, to the, my secondary school, Second with that art teacher who didn't like me. I once sent him a rude postcard from New York <laughs> saying I was with Andy Warhol and that kind of stuff. But, you know, it was about the song and it was getting people to be, to represent dead soldiers who died that day. And they were in full uniform, really accurate uniform. They looked really great actually. And we rehearsed for months, about months, to, to get the whole correct language. They weren't actors necessarily, some of them were, like young actors. Um, but the whole point was, it was seeing these young men in these uniforms in contemporary British scenes. So stations, shopping centres, car parks. So ugly Britain, basically, a lot of it. High streets. And that was, that's what made the project, the sort of visual stress of uh, seeing these men in, in uh, you know, Tesco's or Ikea. There's a picture of one outside pret a -Manger. Uh, photograph of that, but they would have hung out in places where people hang out and would have been in very contemporary settings. Just like, not being creepy, but just being there, you know, and uh, not speaking to anyone, but giving out cards with their names on that. So that was a quite a big, that was two years' work. Very big bunch. And I was going to Jamaica like a week later to make a film, which just couldn't have been more different with a dance, about dance, a dance hall dancer couldn't be more different from the First World War. I mean, it, as it turned out, it was, pro it was almost as traumatic as being in a war, <laughs> spending two weeks in Kingston with this, these dancers. But, uh, that's another totally different story.